Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the second oldest programming in the language in the world, which is what? Does anyone know? Oh, it's right there. I wasn't expecting that. Yes, it's Lisp. It is Lisp. Lisp was created in 1958. It was second after Fortran, and it was also a reaction in some ways to Fortran. The two come from wildly different ideologies. Fortran's path of thinking, which is the same used in languages like C and C++, is that you're programming on hardware. You're shifting around bits and memory and register, and you can manipulate all of that. I call this thinking the, the path of darkness. And the opposite, the opposite thinking is embodied in Lisp and, and also like Python and Ruby. Uh, it's a programming language that's high level, fully expressionized, completely extensible, and generally just very badass. I love it. Uh, it doesn't look like it at first. So this, I don't know if you've ever seen Lisp, but this is Lisp code. And there are a lot of parentheses, lots of parentheses. It doesn't look very pretty. It's actually the, uh, why the title of my talk is this. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, but what's with all the parentheses? Ah, my notes just... Okay, here we go. Uh, what is with all the parentheses indeed? Uh, it's simple, and just pay attention to what I'm going to say, because this is most of the language. This is the, structure of a, this is the structure of a Lisp program. Lisp stands for Lisp Processing. Lisp. Uh, every single program is just made of lists within other lists. Uh, this is 80% of the language. You surround something in parentheses, you turn it into a list that's going to be evaluated. The Lisp interpreter will evaluate the list, assume the first element, like this, or like this, or like this, it's also like this, is a function. And uh, the rest are arguments. Hence the weird expression for math. It's not infix notation, it's prefix notation, which I haven't seen in any other programming language. And that's the reason why. So what's the deal here? So building on that, look at this function definition. Every single thing here uh, follows that. It's just a list. Defun is a function call, and the rest are arguments. They're nested arguments. Uh, what makes this so cool is that even though by default lists evaluate immediately, you can stop them from doing so if you want to perform some other operations on them. So you can put a quote in front of the list to freeze it in place so you can manipulate it. If you just want a list of numbers, you can prefix it with that quotation mark, which you can see right here. But it doesn't have to be just a list of numbers. You can stop it from, you can stop any expression. You can stop print from evaluating. You can stop, um, no, that's my only example. But you can do it with anything. Um, now, the same code here would error out if you hadn't fixed it with a quotation mark, uh, because it would assume the one's a function call. But it's pretty cool. Uh, we call this code as data. So this is what makes every this is what's so different. Since everything is just a list, your program your your program is not just a program and it's not just code, but the entire thing is a data structure. Uh, then there is one more th major thing about Lisp I'd like to show you. It's macros. The really useful thing about your entire program being a data structure is you can actually extend the language. Um, you can do them with macros. I'm not going to go into what all of this is here because they're a huge subject, but this is what they allow you to do. I wrote that macro that you just saw. So you can type in, is the element 34 inside the set 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, blah, blah. It'll either type in, yes, it is, or it'll either print out, yes, it is, or no, it's not. Here, no, it's not. Because of that macro, it allowed me to extend a language. So there's no inside keyword in Lisp. There's no the keyword in Lisp. There's no set keyword in Lisp. But that macro allowed me to put all of that stuff in there. So you can define your own features. Uh, cool. It's really cool. And then this is the last thing I'm going to talk about since it is 50 years old. Well, common Lisp is like 30 years old. But it's annoying to get started in the Lisp. So there are lots of different types. Lips. That Lisp is a family of languages. The most straightforward is probably Common Lisp. It was created in the 80s, I think in the MIT Artificial Laboratory, Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, but don't quote me on that. Uh, you use it with a REPL, which is Steel Bank Common Lisp. I don't expect anyone to remember that. It's terribly named, but if you can slack me, and I'll just tell you where to get it. Um, you install it with Homebrew, and one thing that got, that got to me that was really annoying, you do not run it like a Python program. 
where it's python myfile.python for some reason. It's not svcl myfile.list. Use the indirection operator. It's stupid, I know, but I just saved you three months of Googling that I could have I could have used better. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's the end of my talk. Super, super, um, super excited about Lisp. I encourage you all to check it out. And um, I would really love for you to come to my next talk, C++, why no one needs to use it ever. So thank you. <laughs>